Tech Hub for a smarter you. I had a chat with Franklin virtually um, a few hours ago, and we talked about this intently. And we began by breaking down and him giving us uh, his perspective on the incident that happened just a few um, days ago of Cristiano Ronaldo, a famous footballer, putting aside a beverage brand and raising water saying agua. It's a trend that's always been there, so it's not something that just popped off at the moment. It's just not been pushed to the fore by a celebrated, you know, athlete like um, Ronaldo that we're talking about. Recent data has proven that um, perhaps the actions didn't necessarily prove to the stock market going down for the Coca-Cola um, and brand, but the actions in it were, um, were very indicative of where you know, the brand role in marketing and relationship with celebrities slash influencers is going. It's, it's, evolved, it's evolved over time. And I think we're going to see more of that, especially after the takeout of what happened in 2020. Um, people generally, and we're talking just humans, um, are rethinking the value, you know, of what they really want, what they really need, and who is there to actually cater for these things for them on an ongoing basis. And that's why we're going to see more of those actions. Now, why is this coming now? I think you have to understand that, like I said, a lot of people have gone through different things in the past 18 months, and a lot of people are experiencing things. So brand association is very, very key now and very critical in terms of what purpose are they bringing to the table? In the midst of everything that is happening, the customer has a rethink of what value is, what was considered important in January 2020 was seen as luxury in October 2020. In 2021, where values had changed, to you, a bottle of water could be seen as luxury. I would prefer to go get such a water or I would prefer to go buy, you know, a dispenser for a certain amount of value, maybe 600 naira, so that I can use it for a week or a month rather than take a bottled water carton that I usually bought before for 1,200 naira. I'm rethinking my values. That means that dispenser water will last me for four months at the price of one package water. I'm not trying to form any big boy. I'm just trying to ensure that the amount I have is necessary can adequ adequately cater for the things because we all know the value of the Naira is continually dropping. So the value of 1,000 Naira as at January is different from now. Talk less of last year. We didn't even know it was going to be in December. So when you look at those local nouns on ground and you see how does it correlate with what's going on on the global front, they are very interconnected. Very, very, very connected. And it's again, one word, value. If this personality, and we don't have to talk about the sports personality, if a personality on a day-to-day -day basis is exercising, trying to take care of doing wellness and, you know, trip, and he's taking, you know, a certain beverage with him, it almost comes as a, you know, um, snowman when he sits down and you're putting two sweetened drinks in front of like, and I, I, I think that was not deliberate for the brand. Like, it, it's because it's Coca-Cola. I think it's just like, man, give me space. Let me pour what I, what I just came out from the gym. But let, me, let me have some. But again, the thing was blown larger than life because there was a personality. The brand is a famous brand. And of course, because um, it's, a, it's expected because that brand is sponsoring, you know, uh, and, and that team and so on. The guy should be sensitive to, to those things. And I, and I appreciate that. But I think the guy was just being human at that particular point in time. So I, I think we're seeing what you call the, the, the branding is going to also be very huge as well. So value is one of the key things. We're thinking value. Two, um, we're going to be seeing growth of the branding, where it's not so much the logo, you know, or the organization, where you're coming from, but it's more about what is your point of view on things that happen around you. Yes, I know you're into cocoa. I know you're into sugar. I know you're into automotive. I know you support transportation. But what is your point of view on the customer landscape or on transportation as a whole or on sugar, you know, as a thing? 
And how are you helping in your own little way to help alleviate the suffering or growth of that economy or the ecosystem or the environment or the society or the community around you aside the sales of your products and services? And it could be for every one era I sell, I will put you know, one cobble behind it. It depending on what the board you know, resolution is. It doesn't have to be that, but just using that as an example, just so that people see that there's a sort of, there's, a, there's empathy towards the people in that ecosystem, that value chain you're trying to sell those products to. Do you see brands changing strategy or, you know, other companies, you know, marketing uh, communications companies changing strategy because of what has happened now? In the sense that they won't go for who has the highest following anymore like they used to. It won't just be a case of, you know, this person has 10 million followers. He has so many eyeballs on traffic. Let us take our brands to them. What specific changes are you going to see that's going to happen um, as regards advertising, online advertising specifically, and also on, the, on an individual as a result of what has happened now? Yeah, um, a, few, a few things. One is the kind of partnerships organizations now have with influencers and celebrities going forward. Brands are learning much more that it goes beyond the numbers of what these influencers have. Influencers might have one million followers, and brands like to connect with such, you know, with such celebrities because they feel if they if this brand associates with this influencer, they will also have access or the reach of those one million followers. But it doesn't necessarily happen that way. But whether you like it or not, the brands wanted that association. Now, because of sensitivity, it's going to change. It's not going to travel that way anymore. Brands also want that reach and access. But do you believe in my brand? Is it something that we can actually communicate, sell to you so you have a belief system, even if you aren't using it before, so that there's an ideal and understanding between the brand and the celebrity. So brands will be very, very sensitive to the kind of influencers and celebrities they connect with going forward. You have to believe in the product, you have to believe in the brand, you have to believe in the service, you have to believe in the point of view, so that when you also commu consumers you know, gravitate towards you, they, have, they, they believe there's you know, authenticity here, they can correlate and understand why you're associating with that brand and they see value themselves. The other thing that will change is you probably might not be going to what you call micro influencers. Those that are subject experts on particular industries and things. So I might go with an artist, a uh, hundred million followers, but his repertoire is, um, and his focus is music. But I just want to associate with him, even though I am doing some on beverages or electronics, now, going forward, I prefer to talk to someone who actually understands electronics because that is his or her comfort zone. They can do that from time, and he's been respected as a subject matter. He might not have 10 followers, he might have 50,000, but there are 50,000 followers that are in tune to what he's saying. They agree with him, or they have communication, participation, and feedback. So, I, I feel that number in terms of participation and engagement than someone who has 10 million followers and maybe only two or three people who actually want to associate with that product or service. The individual brand is beginning to be more powerful than the corporate brand. Does that look like what um, it's going to, you know, continue happening in, in, in time to come? Well, um, not necessarily. I, I, look at it, I look at it in a different way. Where individuals become, in, in quote, powerful, uh, where, where brands want to associate, associate with them is because they have a belief system. And they've done something for a period of time, they have experience, and they have respect for that thing. So there is a followership. And I'm not talking social media followership. I'm talking in terms of real interests. Because everybody gives everything up by social media. It's not, it's not, it's, 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 that's not the real world. There's, there's, there's a real world offline, and we need to understand that matrix as well. So let me put it into perspective. Let's say I like style and fashion, okay? I have maybe 5,000 followers on my social media, and I do business worth 100 million naira 
every year. But because I'm not really a social media savvy person, I just post one or two, three things. But I have a huge followership. And I'm talking the real fashion world, you know, from editorials or style magazines to people that actually buy my stuff and those who also play online uh, as, as well. So I command respect as a stylist. They'll come with me from that perspective. Hey, Franklin, I love what you're doing. Can you give us perspective on what the future of fashion or style would be? And I can consult for them in that regard. It, it doesn't matter whether I have two followers on my social media. Program. But if they wanted to connect with my followers, they probably will not select me as an influencer on that regard. Because first of all, they'll go analyze my social media platforms. I say, this guy doesn't have a one million dollar reach. I'll probably connect with someone who probably has less experience, is not really interested in the product or service, but has 10 million followers. Now, out of that 10 million followers, how many, what, what, what would the conversion rate in terms of people that actually associate with that brand, like the brand, go offline to actually interact, engage, experience that product or service you are trying to offer, purchase, sell, or talk about it? The, the numbers, you see the ratio would, would, would vary. So I think, like I said, what, what we'll probably see will be Rather than say the individual will be bigger than the brand, I think we'll see more of thought leadership. People who espouse a point of view and a perspective on a particular industry or sector. What message should this send to influencers, current influencers and um, potential influencers? Because that seems to be the career path many Gen Zs and some millennials want to follow. They want to be influencers, so it's another way of making money either full-time yeah. or by the side? The key thing would be, be yourself, be natural, be authentic. I think that's one of the most important values you need to have. If you are true to who you are, whether a brand comes or not, you have a particular story that you always want to tell and share. And the brand can be a part of that experience and help amplify the story you're doing. But if you change that story only to amplify what you think the brand would like to hear, you're not only disengaged from those that are connecting with you, you're also not true to that brand because after the brand comes, that's what you want to do and goes, and that brand comes, you become, you, you become like a wave, you're moving. At the end of the day, the question will be asked, who are you? And, and you don't want to be seen as someone that doesn't stand for anything. They have, they have, there must be some things you, you reject, there's some things you accept. But the things that shouldn't change are your values. So taking it again into perspective or contextualizing it will be, if you love beauty and healthcare, and you're always talking about it in terms of how people should gym, take care of themselves, their bodies, their spaces, and you want to, of course, natural, everybody wants to go and make money and you know create wealth. And the brand says, I want you to talk about education. The discussion you would have would be, how can I educate people about beauty and wellness? Not that you've jumped into a totally different platform and start talking about how I should do investment banking. I'm like, what is this lady talking about? I will, I will know from get to your marketing and I'll know you're not true to type. So you will turn me off as a customer, you will turn me off as a consumer. And then you also will not stand for anything. 